we've got two of these cat v12s right now we actually have a third one once one gets rebuilt but this v12 has a big advantage over the other v12s and that is this one's got dual starters I got a, this is a C27 cat motor running 875 horse. And that's a C13 up there running 450 horsepower. Uh, that's got a single starter, which obviously most of them have, all of them have. But what they do with this V12 was they put dual starters on it. I got one on this side, right in there. And they got one on the other side, tucked right away, right in there. And as you can tell, those are both original starters. Haven't had to do anything with this thing, with this V12. It's got 50, almost 5,700 hours on it. And ha I have not had to replace anything on it except for the alternator. Uh, that's the only thing I had to replace. It was actually overcharging. So Troy from Cat hooked me up with another alternator. Um, it doesn't, that's all this is used for over here. The uh, radiator's there, so you got a hydraulically controlled fan. But those dual starters are absolutely wonderful. And in the old chipper, what happened a lot was you're constantly fighting that V12 to start on cold mornings. It was, uh, I was reading like four or five degrees this morning. I know some other people had minus 11, minus 10 right close by. We were running about five, I think my phone said, which I don't know if that's true or not. But anyways, one problem we had was we couldn't get this V12 started. That was always a big hassle, trying to start that big that big motor in the cold with our old chippers. And we got the, this new one, and this thing, the V12 starts wonderful in cold weather, and it's the little motor that gives me a hassle. And it all goes back to them dual starters on that thing. This thing just cranks. I got the original batteries. I believe they're the original batteries in this. That might be a new set in the old one. I, I might be wrong on that. I'm trying to think. That might, that, that might be one new set in that one. This one's original batteries. Because I think we did replace those two one cold morning. This V12 has the original batteries that came with the chipper and I've ran it for four years now. And it's been through some minus 30 degree Fahrenheit uh, temperatures and this thing will crank right up. That one will give me a hassle and it won't just crank right up like vroom, ready to go. It, uh, it talks back to me just a little bit. But this C13 We've replaced the starter, and I think we've put a new solenoid on it twice. Um, as you can tell here, it's not the same color, of course. But we've had to replace that twice. Um, and actually, on the new flails they're building right now, which any of you guys at Moorbrook, if you're building a new flail, get a hold of me, I want to come see it. Um, I told a couple salesmen that we'd love to come see a new flail getting built down there. Because what they're doing is they're taking and removing this motor off and just having one, uh, I believe it's a 1200 horse V12, or yeah, 1200 horse V12 on there and eliminating that little motor. It should be a lot less maintenance with only one motor than having the second one. So. That'd be nice. But for what it's worth, this has got the second little motor, which ain't that 
not a break, make or break deal. It is what it is. But we've had to replace that starter quite a few times. Like the one time and the solenoids twice. Um, that one is always harder to start that C13. And that C27 just starts flat out smoking. So we, we had a minus. I pulled the landing. It was two winters, two winters ago, and it was minus 32 in the truck when I pulled into the landing. Um, Fahrenheit, I, Celsius, I, Fahrenheit. Okay, we use Fahrenheit here in the in, in the great United States of America. Okay, and if you guys don't, that's cool, but. In the great United States of America, we use Fahrenheit. It was minus 32. This little motor wouldn't fire, and this V12 took right off. I was like, oh, I was pumped. Because I was worried, that was the first winter we had it, I was worried, was it two or three winters ago? I can't. After you're out here in the woods for so long, you just, it all goes together. The first one we had that, it was three or four or more. <laughs> I can't keep it all straight. <laughs> uh, fired right up, and I was excited. I says, wow, this V12 fired right up. It was the first one we had, the old chipper. I'm like, that's nice. And a guy named Jojo that was working for us, he come running around and says, shut it off, shut it off, shut it off. And uh, I'm like, dude, it fired up. And he says, no, there's oil blowing all over. So I shut it off, and... Much to my disappointment, what had happened was, is the oil cooler on these were giving problems uh, to the Moorbark chippers because they're too fine of a hydraulic cooler. Okay, right here. And what had happened was, this right here, there was so much pressure trying to go into the tank that it would cut right here and just blow all over. Well then of course when it does that, it hits the fan right here, because oil's just psh. And then the fan decided it would throw it all along the side of this chipper. And it was a mess. And it was no fun to deal with. It, and of course it's minus 32, the hose is blown, and oil everywhere. Hose don't want to move, we cut the hose off pulled the chunk off and reconnected it and it was an absolute nightmare because of course the hose don't want to work with you at all it's cold brittle and it was a mess and the next winter it did the same thing again that it blew apart so what Moorbark did was Moorbark straight up hooked us up they sent us a bypass valve which is covered in snow and bark right now right there and this T Runs the uh, runs to that. I'll explain it to you later, maybe. But just a heads up. And what that bypass valve does is, whenever it gets a bunch of pressure, it just bypasses that cooler. Ever since we put that on there, we ain't had a lick of troubles, and it has been really nice, really, really nice. But that's kind of uh, cold weather stuff for this thing couple of issues we deal with it um, but them dual starters they're excellent they're most excellent because let me tell you that old chipper we were constantly putting starters on that thing all the time uh, nothing worse than a starter going out and I got some stories about that maybe for a different video I don't want to bore you but we had it so bad one time that a truck driver started the chipper for me starter was engaged he couldn't hear he literally couldn't hear i mean he was like what what because he was a truck driver that had some straight pipes at one time and started it i got in it and started chipping because the trucker figured that if he'd start it then we'd get to work quicker started chipping then all my electric shut off and by the time 
I got down to figure what was going on. It had, corro it had melted the terminal right off the batteries. And uh, these are both 24 volt systems. And that big motor on the old chipper is 24 volt. It had melted the terminals right off the battery. I mean, gone. So we got new batteries. Thought we were good to go. Starter was junk. Flywheel was junk. Which then means you have to tear the whole clutch off the chipper, the belts, all that off to put a new flywheel on. And it cost us a whole day of chipping. So the dual starters is most excellent. <laughs> when you don't got to deal with that kind of stuff, it just is awesome. Extra awesome. So that's the dual starters on the big V12. And uh, it makes a big difference come winter time. I'm getting that baby rolled over and like I said 5600 hours on it never touch the starters on them so it's awesome